students in today's class let us learn about the hydrosphere it might be surprising but it is a fact that less than 1% of the water that the earth receives is useful to the human beings now let us look in detail about the cycle of water or the hydrological cycle <music> Water as we all know is a renewable resource and is cyclic. In other words, water can be used and reused. The water undergoes a cycle from oceans to land and from land to the oceans. This process has been taking place for billions of years. All the life depends on this on the earth. Now let us learn about the hydrological cycle the circulation of water in various forms like solid liquid and gaseous is called hydrological cycle in addition the constant exchange of water between various features like atmosphere land oceans subsurface and organisms is a part of the hydrological cycle in mathematical terms, hydrological cycle is expressed as Rf is equal to Ro plus Et, in which Rf refers to the rainfall and includes all types of precipitation, while Ro is runoff and Et is evapotranspiration. So, the sum of the runoff and the evapotranspiration results in the rainfall. The hydrological cycle is made of a total of six stages. Now, let us have a look at the six stages of the water cycle. Evaporation, transportation, condensation, precipitation, runoff and groundwater are the six stages of the water cycle. The evaporation is the first stage of the hydrological cycle. The water on the surface of the earth reaches the atmosphere through the process of evaporation. In the first stage, the water is converted from the liquid to the gaseous state. The heat from the sun causes the water to evaporate from the surface of the earth. The various water bodies like land, lakes, rivers and oceans are the main sources that send a constant form of water vapor. The water from the plants also reaches the air through the process of transpiration. The transportation is the next stage in the hydrological cycle in which there is the movement of water through atmosphere. In the other words, transportation of water from ocean to land in the form of clouds. The clouds are caused to move from one place to another by upper circulation or surface based circulations like land and sea breezes or through other processes. In the process of condensation, the water vapor that gradually condenses is transported resulting in the formation of tiny droplets and clouds. The precipitation acts as the medium that carries the water from the atmosphere to the surface of the earth. Let us see how. As the clouds come in contact with the air on the land, the precipitation in various forms like rain or sleet or snow and water returns to the land or the water bodies. Students, most of the water that comes back to the land flows down the hills as runoff. While some of the water that returns to the land penetrates into the ground and charges, the remaining water merges into the ocean and evaporates. Well, students, under some special conditions, the groundwater flows upward into the artesian wells. The flow of the water upward into the artesian wells is slower than runoff. Here we have to understand that the hydrological cycle is not just circulation of water between ocean, atmosphere and land. But 
there are many other sub cycles that make up the cycle now let us learn about water sources students when it comes to the sources of water around 97.25% of the water is saline ocean water while only 2.75% is fresh water the major portion of the fresh water around 68.7% is present in the form of ice and permanent snow cover in the regions of antarctica arctic and in the mountain regions only the remaining 29.9% is available as fresh ground water around 0.26% of the total fresh water is present in the lakes reservoirs and river systems students this water is very easily accessible for our needs and is very important for the water ecosystems